What is the easy way to do the play then? I do believe when you have, when you're starting, don't become precious about your work. Your first work will not be your first, your best work. Okay, it's your first work. Learn what you can from it. Reduce the cost. Reduce the investment. Just put it on for a couple of nights. That's more than enough to see the difference between the two nights and experiment with a couple of things. And then let go of it and use the money that you have to create something completely different in six months or a year. Mm -hmm. Are you the writer, are you the director, or are you the actor? Mm -hmm. The easiest way to all of it. <laughs> I would say, as a writer, give your work away. Stay the heck away from the product. Mm -hmm. There are absolutely so many actors out there and potential directors that would be grateful to get a new piece of writing and push it and wash your hands clean. Do not try to be involved in the process. You want the credits as a writer, just give your work away. Yeah. As a writer, you should be trying to take part of competition constantly. You should be trying to get into the development project, uh, development. Um, there's development opportunities, usually for younger people. Mm -hmm. With um, whether it is old vague or young vague, there is a lot of things on Twitter. Join all the communities. Try to find out new voices, different projects, incubator projects, and so forth. Programs. As a writer, that's the easiest and fastest way that you can get your work out there. Do not try to be your own director. You are a writer. Maybe later on in your career, that would be a great thing to do. But for now, you are a writer. Focus on doing the writing the best you can. I, I don't know many success stories, and we're not talking about Fleabag, where one person does everything. If you, if you are specifically writing your own voice as a one-woman show, go for it. Do everything. But the majority of the people who are trying to be writer directors are not writing a one woman, so they will perform. Mm -hmm. So just let go of it. As a writer, you have way much better chances. Just keep writing constantly. Give away your work. Try to see, perform, try. There is always submission windows in bigger theatres, Hampstead Theatre. Honestly, you will mostly just be judged by the quality of your work. So how does it work? Like you as a writer, like is there like just a theater company who they just ask writers to send them their place and they choose from? There are some theater that just want script. Mm -hmm. Whether that's the Bush Theater or the Hampstead Theater, do your own research, but it's on the website. Mm -hmm. So there's a hundred, I have, a, I've created a spreadsheet. There's those theaters in London. Mm -hmm. Do they accept scripts? Do mm -hmm. they accept plays? What do they want? So you write out, you see when are the submission windows, etc. Then you have smaller companies on Twitter, Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Uh, they're always having collides for writing submissions because the work of the writer is the most thankless one. And uh, it's actually the easiest one to actually monetize. So there is a lot of empty spaces for new script mm -hmm. as long as you don't want to direct or act in them. Or be paid. But as an actor, pretty hard to get cast anywhere. Yeah. Even, Even if there is no pay. It's, it's, it's insane, yeah. So if you compare writing and acting, writing is so much easier. I don't know. I mean, there are... There's a lot of writers as well. Would you submit for a scratch night? Would you submit? Like, this is the early stages. We're talking about early stages. Yeah. Early stage submissions for writing, so much more easier to get seen than early stage submissions for acting. Mm -hmm. That is the challenge. But uh, what I'm going to say is directing is, again, a completely different kettle of fish. There is a lot of openings for directors compared to everything else. For first-time directors? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 
you can, there's so many scratch nights. There's scratch nights in probably every second pub theater. How, I mean, in a way, I mean, like, how do you get a job as there? As an actor, I understand you do the audition. As a writer, you write a piece and someone looks at it and says like, oh, that's shit, but well, that's the only thing we have. And then, but as a director, how do you audition, especially in the very beginning of your career? You just show up. And they're like, yeah, this will do. Really? As long as you do not aggressively mess it up, as long as you do not actively antagonize people, you can have an entire career in directing by just being on a chair. Mm -hmm. Try to be angrier. <laughs> It's easy to be a bad director floating around in the fringe. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> no, I mean, look, no, I, I, I understand that. I just don't understand why would you want to be a bad director. <laughs> that is why we have a lot of writer directors. Mm -hmm. Because then it becomes the, I have a vision. Yeah. I have a perfect vision that encapsulates ABC. I can say all these things because I am a writer and a director and I have directed other people's work. And it is actually difficult to be a good director. Being a good director is difficult because you have to be a therapist, you have to be a cheerleader, you have to be the person watching the time. Or totalitarian, just like... No, like that's... <laughs> no I will not accept that being a totalitarian is being a good director. As someone who was acting in the play that you wrote, mm -hmm and at the same time being directed by someone else. How does it feel like when someone directs you as an actor in the piece that you played, but like with their own vision? I love it. If anything, I would, I prefer firmer directors mm -hmm. that actually have a very specific idea that can be completely different than mine. Mm -hmm. I, I would like, okay, if you bring me a director that's like, um, And now do a fart joke here. <laughs> so it goes like, well, actually, I don't think I would mind that. <laughs> Good. I mean, come on, fart jokes can be funny. What's not funny about fart? Th there's definitely fart situations. Um, I mean, it diffuses the pressure. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm having ideas now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the whole play is one woman show and it's all farts. It's all farts. <laughs> it's one, one long fart. Sorry, we digress. Uh, we're very, very cultured people here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the, being directed in your work is... I do not... I was very lucky to actually come from the theoretical arts and performance background. Because very early on, you learn about the death of the author. Mm -hmm. That means the moment you create something, it's no longer yours. The person who watches it, in the best case scenario, will own it. And then it will become their story and then they will interpret it through their own lens. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing, I, I write, I self-publish so much work and then people are like, Oh my gosh, this and this means that. And I'm like, absolutely not. But I absolutely love the fact that it has taken a new life and it means something completely different for you. Like I had uh, people who came to me after the show and they were like, oh my gosh, Mike is a metaphor for this and it means this and that. And I'm like, sure. Yeah, yeah, I am so smart. I, I put in all those things. Are you kidding? I am a genius. Of course not. That is why being directed on your own play is amazing because someone will see it with a lens of a person that has different life experiences. And then there will be bits and bobs in the finished product that people from all different works of life can empathize with. That's why I believe in a more collaborative process rather than a less collaborative one. Yeah, I agree. To, to a degree, I would say, because 
Like there's there should be someone who should make decisions in like in the end. It can be collaborative process to a degree, but then there should be someone who will make decisions. Otherwise, it's like collective bullshit. Yeah. One voice on set. Mm -hmm. One voice on set. Mm -hmm. Like that's why writer and director needs to be different and the writer cannot really be in the room while the director is doing the work. I don't know, it, it depends. It depends how, like, I, to a degree, I disagree with that, though, because I think when the writers are basically in charge in, in TV, we get, like, some very, very great shows. When directors start interpret some of the writers uh, writing on films and they don't actually collaborate with writers sometimes they misinterpret some things that are very important there is no one on set next to them to tell them that actually that was on purpose this line is very important because if we don't have this line how the film doesn't make sense no when it comes to that i completely agree with the show it's especially because like we're talking about the play it's one hour it's two hours depending uh it's good to have the conversation with the writer. It's good for the writer to show up during the rehearsals and have an opinion, but they cannot both be on the set of course. at the same time. Yeah. But when we're talking about show running, a big series, oh yeah, then you need a lot of eyes because there is different people doing different things. Like I have worked in pilots, smaller things, things that we did as a collective. Mm -hmm. And that's when you want more voices, but each person having a very specific part. Continuity, character art, specifically directing for cinematography, directing for performances. There's so many things that 